was this? <laughs> I was trying to give you a hint. In case you didn't know what you the world was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think we are getting close. Yes, we are technically live now. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Here, this is of course meat, uh, freshly harvested. I believe this is goat that we're working with. So he likes to work with some very strange proteins. Uh, this is a, this isn't the ostrich, is it? This, no, this is uh, no, this is just a fillet. It's a fillet mignon, which is uh, the most pretentious of all the cuts of meats. I think you got to know a special second language to be able to describe this fillet mignon. So it's a beautiful cut of fillet. Uh, he's got it uh, seasoned uh, with, this is our saltiest salt, right? This is the uh, smokiest salt. Got smoked. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I was just, uh, I was bogarting it with your smoked salt. All right. Man, did you really peppering this thing up? Are you going to light my face up with this thing? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I, I do like pepper myself. I use it uh, pretty unabashedly. I thought until I saw just how much he, he poured on there. It, ever since I had kids, my kids get mad if I put a, a, a dash of, of pepper into scrambled eggs, so I had to like back off my pepper. I used to have a nice strong palate for things that were very, very spicy, but now anymore I'm very I got a gingerly palate anymore. So I'm excited for that. It's smelling nice. I can definitely smell uh, some, some aromatics coming off of the stove. Uh, Getting uh, three more pans going here. I don't know exactly what uh, he's got. Well, uh, this is a looks like buttermilk, maybe uh, uh, milky milk. No, it's a it's definitely a cream of some sort. I can't exactly say which. Uh, kind. Is it just is it just heavy cream? Okay, it's just heavy. I love that you can't talk, but you're gonna give me some some hand signals. Ooh, well, what do we have here? That's doing nothing for me. I, 
Okay. I feel like that might be some garlic salt. Is that the uh, uh, onion salt? Onion salt. Okay. I wasn't catching onion off of that. There is a, a thing of open garlic floats. It's kind of taking over uh, these old olfactory senses thus far. Oh, I didn't know we were going to get so fancy with the, the utensils. All right. Oh, and we've got a little salty baked pinch of salt into the uh, whatever that creamy mixture is. Oh, and here we have some manchego cheese. Is that cheese or is that uh, shredded potatoes? Cheese it is. Okay, because I know we're working with Yukon Gold potatoes, but that uh, dark colored, uh, uh, I don't know what kind of cheese it is, but uh, oh my goodness, a little splash of olive oil, I'm assuming, as you version, which uh, as you all know means that this, these, all those weren't even allowed to flirt. That's what makes them extra virgin. Uh, I spent my high school career. Okay, now we have our Yukon Gold potatoes and our mandolin. Now, are you going to want to wear a cut glove with this? Probably not. Okay, not. Because he's a professional. If I was doing this, you would be eating pieces of uh, epidermis and a couple of uh, probably fingernails of mine. So he's doing it without a cut glove because Sean lives life on the edge. Looks like you're making some uh, homemade potato chips. Oh, look at this. He's ringing them nicely into uh, to our saute pan. Oh, that's his, oh, and, and of course, he was just showing us exactly what he was doing as far as using the mandolin to get these potatoes. So paper thin, you can, you can actually like see through them almost. It's, uh, oh, well, not exactly. <laughs> Nothing to see here anyways. So he's lining the pan with them. So you get them cooked evenly. Look like that one. Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> maybe you got like like a potato, but it wasn't quite as cut as thinly. But you, these potatoes aren't peeled. They're just they got the peel on them. It's where all the flavor lies. Uh, my mom is of course from Idaho, so I'm kind of a potato snob myself. Um, oh, the, the steak is being seared nicely on the underside. Are you gonna put that whole pan into the oven eventually once you just sear onto it? I'm not a culinary guy. I'm not a culinary uh, genius like like my boy Sean here is. So uh, uh, I've worked in kitchens my whole life, but uh, I was basically just picking up food and taking it out to the customers that I was, I was able to serve. serve. So uh, Sean is, of course, following and adhering to all the, the rules of keeping things as clean and as nice as possible. Oh, we're getting back into some more smoke. Which, uh, is this our cherry smoke salt? Which smoke salt is this? I thought oh, sorry, that's the chef's blend. Oh, this is the chef's <laughs> blend. Who's the chef that blended this? Uh, you? You bet, bud. This is your special blend? This is Sean's proprietary blend of salt. All right. Why did you get to have your name on it? That should be like, uh, you should be get top billing. Sean's blend. Wilson's wicked. Smoke salt. They don't want you to steal it. I get it, I get it. We're spreading around the love. No, we got a lot of other seasonings here that we haven't even touched. So, uh, so this is a, oh, you're putting the sauce directly into the cheese. Oh, so you're making kind of like a scalloped potato. Okay. I do like scalloped potatoes. My wife is not a big fan of scalloped potatoes. I like potatoes pretty much any way I can get them. I'm a big fan of the, of the funeral potatoes. Not so much of the funerals themselves, but if I know they're going to be served with the potatoes, I might just show up at your service. Look at that. All right. What happened to the cheese that was in it? Did it get melted? Oh, it's in. It's melted down. It's down in there. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So we're making almost like a casserole here. Oh, of course. And the thing, if you're working with potatoes and uh, scalloped potatoes, bacon's the thing that's going to set that dish off. Give it that nice bacony uh, flavor. And of course, the regular fat from the bacon making the potatoes probably that much uh, more flavorful. Uh, yeah. All right. So. Some really great smells coming off of the, the sear on this, ooh, this filet. It's got a nice, nice sear on the outside. It's just flipped it again. You get that, that nice sear on the outside, kind of seals in the juices of the steak. Now, did you say that you're going to put that whole thing in the oven eventually, or no? You're just going to put that all on the, on the stove top. Ooh, okay, all right, all right. We're not going to eat too many secrets. But I like where we're going with that. All right, you just put a liberal dollop of the extra virgin olive oil into his, his new pan. And uh, so we got the surf going. It looks like we're going to get some turf, or the turf going. It looks like uh, we're going to get a little bit of surf going. Uh, Sean's got some, some delightful prawns here, some shrimp. Do we know? We don't have any idea where these came from. Oh, we put a little bit of extra oil on it. They're raw, cleaned, looking nice. Tail still on, but shelled, of course. Throw a little 
is that paprika? I'm like, all right. Is it going to be weird if you've got uh, oil on your fingers to be pinching and, and doing a salty bake? No, it doesn't matter. Oh, and we're back to the pepper again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, of course, a liberal dash of uh, red and real salt. Okay, so he's got the shrimp pre-seasoned. The paprika looks very nice. He's laying those shrimp in, oh, very tenderly and gingerly, making sure that they cook evenly. I'm excited for that. I'm a big fan of uh, seafood. Uh, my wife considers herself to be a super taster, which, as far as superpowers goes, seems like the lamest. But uh, she's always uh, saying, oh, I taste, uh, I taste cumin uh, with my mouth, <laughs> which I always thought was weird, because there's really no other way to taste something. So she considers herself to be a super taster, but then again, she frequents Arby's. Which makes me think, not too great a super taster, if you know what I mean. All right, now we got a liberal dollop of, is this margarine? No, of course not. This is just regular old butter. Ooh, and that butter instantly browned as soon as it hit the pan. I wish you could see it. I would pick it up for you, but it looks like it's probably pretty hot. I don't want to do that. Oh, and then we got uh, some garlic, some whole garlic cloves. Did you slice those up a little bit? No. Okay. Now we have, uh, that's rosemary, right? Rosemary, okay. Oh, you're just going to put a sprig of rosemary on the side. Is that just to, to make it look pretty? Or is that going to impart some flavor? All right. Both of these, that seems weird to me that you put like whole garlic cloves and then a whole sprig of uh, rosemary in there without chopping it or, or, or processing it in any way. But you're just getting them wholly in there. All right. Now we're getting the steak into the butter. Oh, man. I can't really see from this angle, but it is, it's, it's turning a beautiful brown color. Oh, that filet is looking absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. It's creating like its own sauce in there, so it's marinating in its own sauce. Right, we still have a lot of ingredients here that we haven't even really touched on. I'm not exactly sure what this one is. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I don't think it's been used. That could be wrong. It doesn't look like the shrimp are cooking as quickly as the steak is. But they're working their way through. All right, I'm getting a little bit of this. Is this shallots or is this just red onion? Shallots, okay. It's the fanciest of the onions. All right, give the shrimp a nice turn, a nice little stir, but add your flip yet. No, no, keep them on one side. Let them uh, sear on the one side. And of course, it's got shallots in there imparting that delicious honey flavor. And I'm really picking that up now. As, uh, as that's getting made. Oh, is this, uh, is this bed working? It shouldn't be because this, this, the smells in here are heavenly. We haven't even touched uh, these green onions. Are, are these just green onions or are these leeks? Green onions? Just green onions, okay. Cool. We haven't touched that yet. Oh, and I feel like I, I may have just uh, expired in order to start. I'm always going on the back and just getting like some greens. All right, look at that. Holy oh, cow. Get some real sexy slices in there. Like that. It's really good looking. A amount of onions here. Okay, and then I got some Italian. Is this Italian parsley? Did you prefer Italian parsley over the freshly curled? I like the little curly kind of parsley. That's the kind I like to grow. See, my wife, is, she considers herself to be Lebanese, uh, but she's really only one, one quarter Lebanese. She's three quarters Irish. Uh, so I describe her as looking like uh, she. She looks exotic. She has that Lebanese look. So she's got dark hair, uh, it's, and she looks like she could do the dance of a thousand veils, you know, like a sexy Lebanese look. But then also, she she looks like she could probably get drunk and, and headbutt some stuff. And that, that comes from the other side of it. it comes from the Irish. But uh, she does a lot of Lebanese cooking, uh, which uses a lot of parsley. And I'll say this about Lebanese cooking. It is very labor intensive, but it is also not very good. Not very intensive. Of course, I'm joking. Uh, I don't particularly like anything rolled in grape leaves. I don't like, uh, but the, the tabbouleh and the, and the kibbeh and, and things like that are, are incredible, amazing, delicious dishes. And I, I hope I didn't offend anybody out there who's a fan of Lebanese cuisine. Because if you haven't tried it yet, I hope this is, is a jumping off point inside yourself. You know, I then can get out there and try some Lebanese cuisine and expand my horizons. You look like you want me to say something. Okay, okay. We're going to talk about, we're, we're going to bring a little bit of acid to this. So we got some citrus. Of course, it is going into our shrimp. Yes. All right. So the acid is getting in there. And oh, of course, and then another acid uh, uh, is, is, is our wine. You can also bring uh, vinegar in 
to that and I think it's a little bit too, but the, 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 the white wine is this um, oh, uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, well, which is uh, delightful. Ooh, and that's making it really nice. I can really smell the shrimp now. I can smell like the, uh, the, the, the shrimp cooking. Another big spoonful down. It doesn't look like you're really measuring things as far as like teaspoons or tablespoons. You're just kind of going with plastic spoon. Oh, he's got it all right up here. He's got it all right up there, folks. We're going to crack open his noggin and find out exactly what we're doing here. All right, so the steak, you want to make this medium rare or how do you like, you like your steaks medium rare than medium? Medium rare or rarer? You like it blue? Yeah, yeah. Because that's savage. Uh, yeah, I never really, uh, I like my, my, my meats to be cooked like, it depends on the cut of meat. Uh, but for a filet mignon, I think medium rare is absolutely perfect. I worked in a steakhouse for a long time, and I couldn't understand how people could eat things uh, blue. But then again, my wife's grandpa used to eat just raw hamburger. He would just be in the kitchen cooking and he'd eat raw hamburger. That's already done! Well, scalloped potatoes are already done? That was movie magic. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's incredible, because it takes me a long time to make scalloped potatoes. All right, topping them with onions, which make, gives them a nice, beautiful uh, color, but also giving them the, the white full flavor. Now, which salt was that? Was that the cherry salt? Cherry wood? Cherry hickory. smoke? Hickory. Hickory smoke. This is hickory licked, folks. The salt, hickory licked. A little bit of hickory smoke brings that, uh, I can't imagine that not being an incredible flavor for your, uh, for your potatoes. And, there, and there's the steak. What are you going to do with... But that's just, that's not a little uh, accoutrement, a little, uh, a little garnish. It's actually, the garlic is in there on top. And then now you have a fresh grape. And does that have to impart any flavor, or does that just look cool? Well, it smells well, okay. okay. All right, and oh, look at that. Holy cow. Oh, that is gorgeous. You know, I've known Sean for several years, and uh, we have kids that are uh, exactly the same age, and we uh, quite often go to Sean's house for delicious meals, and it, it's almost a shame because my kids are, are like, uh, I want Doritos, <laughs> I want some macaroni and cheese, and then of course we're looking at this, we're like, oh guys, tuck in, this is the most delicious, and they're like, meh, it's got pepper on it, I just want some soda. Look at that! All right, so this is our filet. Holy cow, surf and turf style. Uh, seared in butter, browned butter, with a liberal amount of uh, pepper. And was that, was that, that was uh, the original smoke, right? That was the smoke. That was the salt. chef's blend. Chef's blend, Sean's chef's blend. And then we finished her up with some all gratin potatoes with all bacon potatoes. and our hickory smoked salt. Our problem just seems like a, a weird way of describing it, that dish. Because it has the word rotten in it. All rotten. Hmm. I would say taste it and that'll and I'll change your mind. Alright. <laughs> I'm about to become an all rotten fan. Trent, you did fantastic, man. I, I think you nailed I, everything. I worked really hard at this, <laughs> you guys. As you can tell, I put a lot of effort into it. And I wish you guys could be here and smell this because it is filling my face with the most delightful uh, sensations right now. Yep. I can, this is a living life, savory and to the fullest or savorful. You got it. Delicious. And like I said at the beginning, guys, look for this recipe on our website, and maybe we'll see a little bit more of Trent around. <laughs> don't, don't, so don't, don't scare him off. Don't scare him off. Yes. My pleasure. My pleasure. And of course, this is the thing that we're uh, showcasing today is the Redmond Real Salt, our smoky blend. Uh, yep. We've got three flavors, the Cherry, Hickory, and Chef's Blend. Available in a gift set, single shakers, or we also have our pouches. Oh, nice. Yeah. See, we have the pouches of the red, red and real salt, and of course, we, we use red and for just about everything. And, and our, our Relight, uh, our, our daughter runs track, and uh, she's turned the whole, whole track team onto Relight, so it's been fantastic. We love it, absolutely. Well, this. What, what do you think? Should we dig in? I think we, if we didn't, it would be a huge waste of, of these resources, <laughs> considering all the shrimp that gave their delightful lives for this and how all rotten these potatoes are. Let's do it. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Wish you could.